currently I, I, I look after the education of young, old, whatever, people coming through college and it's in STEM education, mechanical engineering, maths, um, lots and lots of different scientific aspects. But, you know, as, uh, that's not me, I'm an engineer and I just love passing on engineering to other people. You know, and this sounds bad and maybe not for everybody to listen to, but at the age of 16 I was desperate to leave school. And, and the reason for that is school, school had general subject matter, but me, I was, I was technically minded and I wanted to go out and learn. I loved planes and I wanted to fly, but I couldn't. I'd take one diabetic and so therefore couldn't fly. But the next best thing for me was being involved with, with planes in some way. And, and, and I took up an apprenticeship with Rolls Royce. One of only eight apprentices that year and 5,000 applicants. So it was tough. Um, Rolls Royce served my time as a fitter, turner. And then throughout Rolls Royce, kept educating myself. So as you were an apprentice, you'd learn what you needed to learn. But I stepped up and done my HNC, my HND, a degree and just kept learning, never stopped learning at that point. And moved from Rolls Royce into the insurance industry as a, a surveyor when I had the qualifications to do that, carrying out safety inspections of plant and, uh, and equipment. Um, from there, obviously a lot of time, seeing every industry and every building, everything you could see throughout industry, engineering, you know, from things like the hospitals through to factories to ferries and you name it, there wasn't anything I didn't see in engineering at that point as an engineering inspector. And it was great fun seeing that from a safety point of view. So then, later on, really wanted to start passing that on. And so as a, a, an educator, I came into education as a lecturer and started teaching. And it's great when you teach people from a safety point of view, you know, because you're actually showing everything that happens in an engineering, maintenance structures and all. Um, but also being able to give a lot of experience across. And that, that's the great thing about our lecturers, teachers, that when they come into that industry, they bring experience in the field, not just knowledge. So when a, somebody wants to learn and they learn from experience, they pick it up a lot better. So that's my experience anyway. There's no such thing as an engineer. And what I mean by that is obviously, I'll call myself an engineer, but there is no one engineer, right? And so therefore you've got engineers that design, you've got engineers that manufacture, you've got engineers that maintenance, or engineers that, that um, inspect, you've got engineers that um, carry out production, um, you've got engineers that are good at actually cutting and filing, and so there's the practical aspects of engineering. And so there are many, many different routes. All of them, though, are massively exciting. You've got electrical engineering, so the, um, taking the electricity and harnessing that for whatever purpose. You know, and you've got engineering that goes into specialist sectors, such as marine engineering. You've got uh, aeronautical engineering, you know, so mining and um, renewable energy, you know, so I could go on all day. It's just massive, absolutely massive. So, an engineer um, can do all the technical skills that you can do with your maths, you can have all your science subjects, but you have to deal with people. So, we call it soft skills, some people call them meta skills, but how you deal with people, how you work as part of a team is massive. So, subjects like what we'd say English or communications are massive. There's also things like modern studies or you know, looking at the world, what's the, what's the economy, what does the world want, what are the politics of the world? Because right now, if I'm an engineer, what's driving me? What's driving me right now is, well, we've got COP26 coming soon, the environment. So what is an engineer's job? An engineer's job, in my mind, is to innovate and to conserve energy. And uh, renewables waste, take out a lot less waste and things like that. So that's why you need to be politically minded as well as technically minded and you need to understand the world round about you and harnessing the world round about you. So for me, modern studies, English, communications uh, and uh, are, are big factors. So sometimes, uh, I don't know about you, but when you look around the world and you say, why did they build it that way? 
Right, so as an engineer, that's a, you, you really must have a, an inquisitive mind. And if you, you know, if you look at some of the things around in Glasgow, you would say, you know, why did they build that ship as large as they did? Why is that bridge a lot bigger than the, the, another bridge down the road that does the same thing? And the inquisitive aspect of that then says, you know, we've moved on in history and we've developed things, and things have got smaller, things have become more innovative. Um, so for me, um, the inquiring mind is the, is the thing about an engineer. So I'll, I'll, you know, you call things built in, you know, a 19 canteen, massive. So uh, Glasgow was full of that when you looked at the ships. And if you build a ship now, it would be a far smaller, but able to do exactly the same thing. You build a crane, now it's much smaller, but able to do the same thing as the cranes in the past. So think of history and what we've done. An engineer needs to think of that history. We used to think of what we've done down the line and, and, and inquire as to why have we done it that way in the past? Why would I do that now and what would I change?